we're in a surprisingly gloomy Spain to go and test drive this thing right here. It's the new Citroen C5X and it might be the most Citroen car Citroen has made in a very long time. And that's because it's kind of a mishmash of a lot of different cars. It's got the silhouette of a shooting brake. It's also got plastic cladding at the side here, a bit like an SUV, and the massive long bonnet of a luxury saloon. And in that, Citroen has kind of made a car that sits in a market of one. Now today, I'm gonna to try and find out whether you should spend your money on one. But before I go any further, if you like what we do, come on, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. When we first saw the C5X, it initially didn't make a lot of sense because it seems to go against a lot of industry trends at the moment. Everybody wants something that's high riding, a big SUV and super practical. And while the C5X has elements of that, it's still got that shooting brake design, which is relatively niche. But the thing is, is, Citroen's quite proud that people aren't really getting it at the moment because it likes to think that it's ahead of the game. And it's also targeting the Chinese market. And the taste in the Chinese market is a little bit different to what we have over here in Europe. But if you throw away the form book and just take the C5X for what it is, it's a seriously good looking car. At the front of the car, you've got this X signature, which is highlighted by these chrome strips and below those sit some daytime running lights that really bring out the aggressive look of the C5X. You've also got below that some light pods, those will act as your standard headlights plus on this model we've just got a bit more chrome trim around the bottom just to give it that element of luxury. On the bonnet you've got these small little grooves that just add a little bit more form without overly complicating the look. We've got 19 inch wheels on this model and we've also got the black and silver contrasting finish which looks very smart indeed. And it's down the side of the car where we have the C5X's unique form factor because we've seen a state crossover cars before but none that really embrace the full shooting brake style. So first of all we've got bits of plastic cladding around the wheel arches and also on the base of the car for that crossover vibe really long bonnet that stretches out and looks great when you're behind the wheel, makes you feel like you're driving a big limousine. And then we've got the two-tone bodywork with the gloss black roof and that's nicely separated with this chrome strip that runs down the back of the car and really highlights that sloping roof line. Now one interesting design element is at the back of the car. Citroen is really proud that it's used stickers in its history to personalise its cars. Now you can't whack a sticker pack onto a premium car like the C5X. So what it's done is integrate these kind of chrome strips into the back of the car and again it just really highlights the form factor of that shooting brake style. We've got two wings at the back, one integrated into the roof and one below the rear window. And the last thing I wanted to point out is just the continuation of that X design where you have the two LED lights right at the back, one either side that when they're all lit up kind of form an X if you're looking at it from a distance. But in my opinion, this really is a very smart looking car. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Peel back the C5X's skin and you'll find Citroen's new advanced comfort suspension, which works in tandem with the company's, get this, progressive hydraulic cushions, which is a very Citroen way of saying pillowy suspension, to basically scan the road and make sure the car is as comfortable as possible. So what it does is it monitors not only the road surface, but also your speed and basically how the car is behaving in the corners to try and keep it as level and comfortable as possible. And Citroen claims that it's got a ride that's similar to a magic carpet. Paired up with the new suspension are Citroen's new advanced comfort seats, which feature a material that's similar to a mattress topper. The material is also 15 millimeters thicker than the non-advanced comfort seats, and they do feel very comfy. Also, one thing I really like about the top spec model is we get this stitching, which is inspired by the Citroen chevrons and looks really smart. And the overall cabin just feels like a really lovely place to be because it's kind of got a loungy minimalist feel to it, particularly with this graphic on top of the dashboard, which is highlighted by a chrome strip that runs along the width of the dash. On this model, we do get leather on the center console, on the seats and also on the armrest here. And inside it, we get a small little tray with a USB-C charger. 
The drive selector is the same design that you find in a lot of cars under the Stellantis umbrella. That's Citroen, Peugeot, Vauxhall, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's also nice to have physical controls for the climate settings. Always a winner in my book. And right at the base here, we have a wireless charger for your smartphone. The steering wheel is standard Citroen. It's nice to hold if a little basic and you've also got some buttons on here to control volume and also the semi-autonomous driving modes but what I find really funny is that you've got paddles on the back of the steering wheel to change through the gears but I can't think of many Citroens of where you'd want to flick through the gears this is all about comfort driving and speaking of comfort you actually get acoustic glass as standard on all C5Xs in the windscreen and you can extend it to the rest of the car further up the range and the really great news as well is that the infotainment system has been massively improved over previous Citroens. Now we actually first saw this in the new DS4 and you can watch my review of that by clicking the link in the top right hand corner. Now naturally this has got more of a Citroen vibe to it, the colours are different and the layout's a little bit different as well, but it's just a lot more fluid and easy to navigate. There doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of slowdown and it seems far more responsive. But best of all, you can actually customize the home screen as well. So if you hold your finger down over one of the panels on the home screen, you then get sent to a menu of where you can customize the touchscreen and have different widgets and adjust it the way you want. And you can also extend that to the digital cockpit as well. And all C5Xs are pretty well equipped, which makes the £26,500 starting price pretty damn tempting. And it goes up to 30000 for the absolute top spec model. The thing you need to bear in mind, though, is that the PHEV commands a serious premium. You'll be paying between eight and £9,000 on top of the base car price to get the PHEV. But if you plan on running this as a company car, then the PHEV is probably going to be the one to go for, because as it currently stands, it has a benefit in kind rate of just 11%. One thing the Chinese market absolutely loves is a long wheelbase car with lots of room in the back. And bearing in mind the C5X has been designed with the Chinese market in mind, the company seems to have really hit the nail on the head because I've just got so much rear leg room back here. And that's with the driver's seat in my position. Now, one thing I was a bit worried about is that with that sloping roof line, it would really cut into headroom. But again, if I sit perfectly upright, there's still quite a bit of headroom still to go. And it doesn't feel that claustrophobic either because the window comes down really far so it's still got that quite airy and bright feeling to it yet you still retain that really cool sloping roof line now aside from that we've also got an armrest back here with a couple of cup holders and a little tray in the center which could be used for I don't know, anything from cigars to pens. And then in the center, we've got a couple of USB-C ports, the climate settings, and a tiny little tray, which I've still not really figured out what you can put in there. The C5X not only has a power-assisted tailgate, but when you open it up, you've got 545 litres of storage, and that actually dips to 485 if you go for the PHEV. Now that's not something that is unique to the C5X. You find a lot of car makers that offer both petrol and PHEV versions. The PHEV will typically have a smaller boot and that's usually because most of the electrical gubbins are stored at the back of the vehicle. And with the C5X the difference between the petrol version and the PHEV isn't actually massively different. I've seen a lot worse. Now the boot itself is pretty big, but it's worth bearing in mind that because we've got this sloping roof line, bulky items might actually struggle to get in the back a little bit. So if you've got, let's say, a washing machine or a refrigerator, now the boot itself is pretty big, but it's worth bearing in mind that we've got this sloping roof line, which does cut into space a little bit. So storing bulky items might be a bit of a pain. You could probably get a refrigerator or a washing machine in the back. It just might be a little bit on the tight side. To help you out though, you've got these little tabs at the side that you can pull here to lower the rear seats and you get pretty close to a flat floor but not completely. And the other thing I love are the running rails on the boot floor. So it means that not only is it a little easier to get stuff in and out of the back, 
but it also just makes it look so much more luxurious. At launch, we're gonna have two petrol engines to choose from and one plug-in hybrid. Now the petrol range kicks off with a 1.2 litre three-cylinder engine producing 130 horsepower. But above that is a 1.6 litre four-cylinder engine, which ups the power output to 180. Power is sent to the front wheels exclusively and through an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which is the same across the entire range. But the one that a lot of people will be interested in is the plug-in hybrid. Now, again, it's based around a 1.6 litre petrol engine, which is hooked up to an electric motor. And combined, they produce 225 horsepower. Attached to that is a 12.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, which can be charged up so you can have electric only running. Citroen's claiming a range of around about 34 miles. In reality, it's gonna be between about 25 and 30, as is usually the case. Now, you can charge at home, at work, or on a public charger, but Citroen's claiming a speed of one hour and 40 minutes using a 7.2 kilowatt charger. Now, you can actually go and charge it on the road using the petrol engine, although I'd advise against doing that because it can absolutely tank your MPG and it's better off to just do it at a proper charging point. Now, one of the worst things that you can do with the plug-in hybrid as well is buy it, charge it up, use it as a hybrid, and then forget to charge it up because you're lagging around all that weight of the hybrid system without getting any benefits from the electric motor. So what Citroen has done is it will give you a reminder and it will keep reminding you if you forget to charge your car up. Yes, it might seem annoying, but the important thing is it's gonna save you a hell of a lot of money if you just stay on top of plugging your car in. As you can probably tell, the C5X is all about comfort and Citroen's throwing around the word serenity quite a lot, which obviously is very marketing-y, but in all fairness, this thing is pretty damn comfortable. Now, Citroens are always known for being really softly sprung and comfort is absolutely the main thing. Now, and I often find that while they can feel pretty comfortable, it can also mean that they throw their weight around. So you've got to drive them really delicately. But this C5X just seems really well sorted. I feel like in most corners, it's able to stay pretty much level. And when you're going over rough roads and kind of nasty surfaces that could let in quite a lot of noise, this thing just feels pretty much silent. Now we have got the acoustic glass all the way around, which might help, but still there's 19 inch wheels in this car and that's not usually the best recipe for keeping out bumps and noises. Yep, on the C5X, this thing is dead comfy. The only gripe I've got with the ride, and it's a relatively small one, is if you go for the PHEV like we have here, there's quite a bit of weight. And if you've got quite a lot of switchback roads like we've had in Spain here, you can notice that the weight can start to throw the car around a little bit. It's by no means as bad as what I felt in the Citroen EC4. You can watch my drive of that by clicking the link in the top right-hand corner. But you might just notice that passengers might be moving around just a little bit, again, only in tight switchback roads. And one thing I found that can make a real difference in the Benz though, is if you switch it over to sport mode. Now, a lot of regular cars that aren't sporty in the slightest, the sport mode is usually a little bit pointless. It might make the car just a little bit sharper and that's it. But on the C5X, it kind of transforms it where the steering gets quite a bit more weight and becomes a lot more responsive. It kind of stops being that vague, soft Citroen steering and just adds a little bit more accuracy. And it also affects the suspension as well. And it doesn't really firm it up. It's just a lot better at managing the car's weight and keeping the car level. And again, we're in the plug-in hybrid. So we've been switching between the motor and electric power quite a bit. We seem to do these really lovely twisty roads and then go through a town of where we can flick it over to the battery. And the transition is actually really smooth. Some PHEVs can feel a little bit jarring going from one to the other when the petrol motor kind of starts up but it's a really smooth experience. And because it's all about serenity and calmness, you find that you can't even really notice when the petrol engine kicks in most of the time. It's only when you really floor it that you kind of notice that the petrol engine is working away. Another thing I'm a big fan of though is the head-up display. Now it's 
uses a virtual 21 inch screen projected in front of you. Now, although that sounds like it could be quite distracting, it's actually super helpful. So I've got the sat nav up at the moment, although it's not connected with Apple CarPlay, which I'm using at the moment. But you can also see things like speed limits and monitor your semi-autonomous driving modes. It's also customizable as well, as I mentioned earlier through the central infotainment display. And you might be thinking, well, if you're using Apple CarPlay, does that mean the base system is therefore not very good? And the answer is no. The actual inbuilt sat-nav system in here is pretty damn good. You even get alerts to speed cameras as well, which you don't get on a lot of cars. The only reason I'm using Waze on Apple CarPlay is because I need to get back to the airport pretty quickly. And also, Apple CarPlay is really well optimized. It's using the full width of the 12-inch panel in the center here, and it looks absolutely stunning. So there's a lot to love about the C5X, and even though it's quite a quirky offering, and on the surface, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. It's actually a really great product. There's a lot of luxury on the inside here. The ride is absolutely superb, and it all comes in at a price that really shouldn't break the bank. I think it's all gonna come down to monthlies and how it might look on a company car scheme if you're gonna go down the PHEV route. But from this first drive, I've been really impressed. I just wonder if the suspension is really gonna be that good on British roads as well, because it's pretty smooth here in Spain, but it seems like Citroen has really nailed the quirky yet kind of clever formula.